Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be creating a motion detector. So how this is going to work is that every time you move away from your laptop, the screen is going to dim and decrease the brightness. And once you come back again, it's going to increase the ba uh, brightness back to normal. Anish? Coming! <laughs> So in order to do this project, we're going to split it into two parts. The first part is going to be able to actually decrease or increase the brightness. And the second part is to be able to create some sort of motion detector, which can tell whether or not you're in front of the camera. In order to increase and decrease the brightness, we're going to be using a scripting software known as AppleScript. So basically, AppleScript helps you uh, change and work with the functionality in the Mac OS. So in this case, it will help us increase or decrease the brightness. This can be done by using this uh, command, right? So first you want to say OSA script. So this mentions that it's an Apple script, right? And then afterwards you want to tell system events and you give it a key code. So in this case, by giving key code 145, it's going to decrease the brightness. And if you want to increase it, I believe it's key code 144. And when you do this, it only increases or decreases it by one unit. But you want to go all the way to the max and all the way to the minimum. So to do that, we're going to repeat that key code 32 times. And then, so that's the whole command. So if I run this in the terminal, this one, it should decrease the brightness all the way to zero. Okay, so as you see, it can decrease the brightness all the way to zero. So now if I run the same thing, but now make sure, look at the key code. So I'm going to change the key code to 144. And now if I run this, it should increase the brightness all the way up. Okay, so as you see that worked. So now we're going to just put this inside of a, a function. To run a command using a Python program, we need to first import the OS package. So import OS. And whatever you want to run, you uh, run it using os.system. So first, we're going to create two functions, one for increasing the brightness and one for decreasing the brightness. So in the increasing brightness, we're just going to do os.system. And we're going to put three double quotation marks on each side, so a total of six. Okay, so we have three on each side. And now we're just going to copy paste our command. So this is the command OSA script dash E tell application system events uh, key code 144. So key code 144 is what you use for increasing the brightness. Now for decreasing, we're going to just copy the same line. Okay, and now the only thing that's going to be different is going to be key code 145 for decreasing. So let's just see if this is working or not. So to do that, I'm just going to first decrease the brightness. So it should go all the way down to zero and then it should go all the way back up uh, to max brightness. So I'm going to run this. So it goes all the way down and now it goes all the way back up. For the second part, motion detection, we're going to be using a popular image processing library known as OpenCV. So if you don't have it already, uh, you need to pip install. Let me show you what the command is. It's pip install OpenCV-Python. So if you run that, it should install OpenCV for you. So I already have it, so it says requirement already satisfied. OK, so now we want to actually get the video input. So to do that, we need to first import OpenCV, so import CV2. So once you have that, you want to do video equals cv2 dot video capture. So I'm going to be putting zero over here because that corresponds to the inbuilt camera. But if you are going to use an external one, put the index that camera is at. So that may be one, two, or whatever else. And then afterwards, you're going to put this inside a while loop. So while true, okay, then you're going to do check comma frame. So check is a boolean whether or not it's reading the video and frame is 
a NumPy array of the actual video. Uh, so video.read. So once you get that done, you actually want to read the video every one millisecond. So for that, you're going to give it a wait key. So cv2.wait key, and then one for one millisecond. Okay, and now if you want to uh, exit out, you want to uh, by uh, clicking the Q on the keyboard. So you're going to do if key equals to ORD and then Q. So if you hit the Q letter, it's going to break out of the uh, while loop. So in order to show this, you're going to do cv2.imshow and then you're going to name it um, anything. So I'm just going to call it recording and you actually want to show the frame. So I'm going to put frame over here. Okay, so once you get that done, you go out of you go um, outside of the while loop, and then you want to release the video. So video dot release, and once you have that done, you want to destroy all the windows. So for that, you do cv two dot destroy all windows. Okay, and now that you run this, I'm going to run that. So as you can see, we get a second window over here, which is recording my face. Now we actually want to detect whether or not the camera can see a face or not. To do that, we're going to be using something called a Har Cascade Classifier. So this is basically a pre-built set of rules which are used to detect a certain object or feature. So in this case, we're going to be using the Har Cascade Classifier in order to detect the front part of your face. So if you've installed CV2, it comes inbuilt with it. So we're going to call the face underscore cascade so we're going to equate that to the hard cascade. So cv2 dot cascade classifier, and it's capital C, okay, cascade classifier. So inside that, you already have it installed, right? So you want to do cv2 dot data dot hard cascades. And plus, because you want the uh, frontal face, you're just going to write this. So inside quotations marks, hard cascade underscore frontal face underscore default dot XML. Okay, so now once you have that, you actually want to change it into a gray frame because the, this classifier only works on gray frame objects. So to do that, you're just going to make a new variable called gray frame. And inside that, you're going to do, you're going to convert the frame to a gray frame. So cv2 dot cvt color uh, frame comma cv2 dot color bgr to gray so you're turning blue green and red to a gray image so now that you have that you want to actually detect the faces to do that you do uh, we're going to call them faces so faces equals to so we're going to call the face cascade so face underscore cascade so you want to detect so dot detect and you're going to use dot detect multi scale because it's a gray frame so we're going to input the gray frame image. So now inside this, you're actually going to have a few variables. So you're going to have the scale factor. So I think, uh, so that's how much basically each time it's going to zoom out by that much and detect for a face. So we're just going to do 1.1. So I think that means every 0.01%. So minimum neighbors. So for this, the average value, I mean, the standard value is 5. And we, we're going to put a min size. So what that means is that if something is smaller than uh, these many pixels, so we're just going to call it 50, 50, it's not going to detect it. So whatever object it detects has to be greater than 50, 50 pixels. Okay, so now that we've got our faces, so I'm just going to show you how it actually detects it. You don't really need to follow this, but this is just for visual purposes. Okay, so now that we run this, it should be able to detect my face and draw a rectangle around it. Okay, so as you can see, it's working. So it's able to detect my face pretty well and it draws a pretty accurate rectangle around it. Before we continue, I'm just gonna copy the old code which has the increase and decrease function. So I'm just gonna paste that over here. Okay, so now that we have that, so what we wanna do is we actually wanna create like a list, right? And the list is gonna have Boolean values of true or false. Uh, so if there is motion, it's going to give out a true, and if there isn't motion, it's going to say false. So to do that, we're first going to initialize an empty list outside of the while loop. So motion equals empty list. So then afterwards, we're going to go here, 
So the best way I thought of doing this is to see if any phases exist. And if phases do exist, that means that there's motion. So if phases dot any, then we're gonna append true to motion list. Append true. Else motion dot append false. Okay, so to see if this is working or not, I'm just gonna print out the last element. So print motion. I'm just gonna put something here to see if it works. Okay. So I'm going to run this. Okay, so as you can see, it's returning true right now. But if I cover the camera, okay, it gives us an error. So I think we can just fix that by putting it inside a try. So try. Okay, so we're going to try that. And then accept. And then if that try, if it doesn't work, uh, it's going to append false. So I think this is the better approach. Okay. Okay, so now it's showing true. Now I'm going to cover my camera and it shows false. Okay, so again, I remove it says true. So we can see that the list is actually working pretty well. So now we have one last and final step, which is to see when do we actually need to decrease the brightness and when do we actually need to increase the brightness? So first we're going to initialize a variable called checker, right? And we're going to make it false. So what does this variable actually mean? So in the beginning, when you first run the program, there is going to be motion because it's going to detect your face. And you want to look for when the motion is false. So when there is no motion. So you want to check for false. So the same way now when I'm out of the screen and once I come back, you want to be checking for true in that time. But in the beginning, we're just going to make checker equals to false and change that later in the while loop. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this up, remove this, and I'm going to remove this print statement. Okay, so before, like I said earlier, we want to check for false. But if we just get one false and decrease the brightness, that might not be very accurate because the motion detector is not too accurate. So instead, I think we should check for the past 10 milliseconds or so. So I'm going to do that by check, first checking if the length of motion is greater than 10. So if there's more than 10 items. So that means it's been more than 10 milliseconds. So after we did that, we need to check if the last 10 items are the same. So to do that, the best way I think is to do if all element I'm just going to call element and define it later, uh, equals to the last uh, item in the list. For element in the last 10 items in the motion list. So what this does is it's just checking if the last 10 items in the list are the same. And now we want to put one more check. If one of the elements in this uh, is equal to the checker. So if the last element is equal to the checker. Now, once we do that, we, have, we need to put one more if statement. So if the checker is equal to false. So what does this mean? If the checker is equal to false, that means that currently there is motion. And you're looking and now there isn't motion. So you're going to decrease the brightness. Okay, so I'm just going to pass it. And now you're going to put one more. Else if checker equals to true. So in this case, it means that there wasn't any motion. And now that there is motion, you want to increase the brightness. So, I'm just gonna, so once that happens, you also want to change the value of checker. So now checker is going to equal to false. And if this isn't really too clear. Once I show you how it actually works, I'm pretty sure it'll be a lot more easy to understand that way. And we're going to print decrease brightness. And over here, we're going to print increase brightness. Uh, this is just so we can actually understand. And also, I'm going to print out the value of checker. 
and this should help you understand what the checker is actually there for. Okay, so now I'm going to run this. Okay, so right now the checker is false, right? You can see that. So what does that actually mean? So that means that it's looking for 10 falses, which means that it cannot find motion for more than 10 milliseconds, and now it's going to decrease the brightness. So now I'm going to cover my camera. So now you can see it decreases the brightness, right? It prints out decreased brightness, and now the checker has become true. So this means that there isn't any motion, and we're trying to look for motion. So we're trying to look for a true. So now once I remove my camera, uh, uncover it, it increases the brightness again and changes the checker to false. The last step is to just clean up our code and make it completely functional. So we're just gonna go through line by lines and then we don't need to draw a rectangle anymore. So I'm just gonna delete that or comment it out. Uh, similarly, we don't need the print function. We don't uh, necessarily need to show anything. So I'm just gonna remove this. Uh, because we're not going to be showing anything, you can remove this as well. As there's no video actually being shown, and there's no windows, you can remove both of those. And over here, instead of just printing decrease brightness, we can actually increase uh, decrease it by calling the function which we defined above. So decrease over here, and over here call the increase function. And let's just run it for one last and final time. Okay, so right now it's actually detecting my face, but if I cover the camera like this, it's gonna decrease the brightness. Now, if I remove my hand from there, it detects my face and it increases the brightness once again. If you want, you can change the timings. Instead of 10 milliseconds, you can change it to something else. You can play around with the frame rates over here. And if you want, you could even add more stuff like facial recognition and there's a lot more you could add to the project. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more content.